Vou falar de filmes fortes. Aqui está um super-herói com o maior par de seios do mundo. Sim, ela está com tudo. Ela é tudo o que você sempre procurou num grande filme. Uma mulher e uma caçarola. Você vai ver muitos romances estranhos. Muitos malucos se babando. Uma gangue de monstros horrorosos. E alguns pobres experimentos. Veja Elvira. Elvira, a rainha das trevas. É o maior par de seios de todos os tempos. Hi, Kurt. It's always been a fantasy of mine to have two guys at once. I'm sure you can write to Penthouse for him. Conheça a Verônica. Ela tem de tudo. Great pate, but I got a motor if I want to be ready for that party tonight. So, when you go to college, what subjects do you think of study? Suas amigas são as mais populares da escola. I'm worshipped Westerberg, and I'm only junior. Os gatões. I just want to get laid. Querem sair com ela. <risos> ela deveria estar contente. <risos> ela procura por algo especial. E um dia ela encontra. Greetings and salutations. Who's that guy in the coat think he is, anyways? Who oh, did he? <risos> His name is Jason Dean. It's in my American history. You're gonna eat this? It's a ram. Doesn't this cafeteria have a no fags allowed rule? Well, they uh, seem to have an open door policy for assholes, though, don't they? What did you say, dickhead? I'll repeat myself. Ele é chamado JD. Ele é um rebelde. Chaos is great. Chaos is what killed the dinosaurs, darling. Um romântico. Is this as good for you as it is for me? Um cara que tinha Verônica em suas mãos. E a levou a um pesadelo. O pesadelo mais divertido. Você jamais viu. Mas esta não é uma história comum. Uma história de amor. Do primeiro sentimento de paixão. Oh, very. Até o último aperto do gatilho. Eles vão até o extremo. Little Attraction. Cool guys like you out of my life. Até que a morte o separe. Little Attraction. Filmes apresenta mais uma superprodução. Henry V, de Shakespeare. Três indicações para o Oscar. Melhor ator e melhor diretor, Kenneth Branagh. Melhor figurino, Felix Dalton.
tattooed, are you in pawn our person? Are you awake, our sleeping sword of war? We charge you in the name of God, take heed. For never two such kingdoms did contend with that much fall of blood. May I, with right and conscience, make this claim. The sin upon my head, dread sovereign. Constable and princes all, and quickly bring us word of England's fall. O oh God of battle, steal my soldiers' hearts, possess them not with fear. Ten thousand of those men in England that we know of today. <laughs> Once more into the breach, dear friends! Once more! I'll close the wall up behind his bed! Speak with King Harry strong, and princes look you strongly armed to meet him. This story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin Crispian shall ne'er go by. From this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered.
ever treats me sweet and gentle the way he should. I got it bad and that ain't good. My poor heart is sentimental. Hello, Pete. Hey, Ruby. Where have you been? You mean lately? Now, you know what I mean. Well, this morning I slept in. Two guys were here looking for you. What two guys? Tony Amati's two guys. When? Oh, about an hour ago. I told him I hadn't seen you lately. Any message? Nothing that they said. I got a strong impression they'll be back. Pete, have you done something bad? First to find bad. Anything that would get Tony Amati's goat. What was that? Your usual, ginger ale. Nothing else? Twist the lime, the eye of nude, a hank of hair. Whatever it was, it was flat. Probably the hair. <laughs> What'll I tell them if they come back? Tell them I didn't even know their boss owns a goat. I was buried alive. Without a phone? No, they buried me with a phone. Then why didn't you call? I tried. I wanted to tell you I was buried and wouldn't be able to see you for a few days. Forgot my number? No. They hadn't paid their phone bill. They? My kidnappers. It's tough enough just dialing when you're buried. Probably didn't pay their bill just to torture you. Why else would they bury me with a phone? So how'd you get out? They dug me up. How come? Found out they kidnapped the wrong man. Lucky. Not for Harold Swaghammer. The man they mistook you for. He looked a lot like me, except for his lips. He had really thin lips, like a chicken. Chickens don't have lips. That's the way he looked. Like this. I don't see how they could have mistaken you for Harold. I was making this face. Why? I had eaten a jalapeno pepper. Shall I go on? Not unless you relax your lips. She may be stuck. Wanna give me a hand? How about a mouth? Better still. Mm. Harold Swackhammer? Actually, there is a Harold Swackhammer. Or was. We were in high school together. 
Hmm? Was he really lipless? Entirely. He had to wear a prosthesis. <laughs> Artificial lips, mm -hmm. huh? He could do everything but blow raspberries and whistle. <laughs> <laughs> one, um, Pete? One time he smacked his lips and set fire to his shirt. <laughs> Were you expecting someone? Well, good evening. Come on, we'll go for a ride. Should I call your sister, tell her you'll be home late? No, it's OK. Pete, you want me to call your brother and tell him you're going to be late? What is this, a family reunion? Johnny Stefano, my lawyer, Sal Rosenthal. If you want to see me, you don't have to send muscle to show me the way. Oh, I call you up, you come right over. Why not? Hi, I'm Pete. Sheila. Pete's what you call a tough guy diplomat. He don't like me, but he don't ruffle my feathers. Or get your goat. Right. Get the man a seat and get out of here. Also got a reputation of being quite a ladies' man. So I'll make it quick. You probably got a date. I want to hire you. <laughs> nah, relax. It's strictly legit. You can declare it on your income tax. I want you to find out who killed Julius Catullus in his pool this morning. You don't know? Be good. No offense. That's common gossip. You and Julius were not exactly the best of friends. How do you know he was electrocuted? I haven't heard that. Yeah. And you being an ex-cop with all those contacts downtown, you'd think you'd know about that. Listen, if I thought that killing Julius wouldn't start a war, he'd have been dead years ago. And I know he felt the same way about me. We don't like each other. But we're businessmen. Business comes first. Except that his brother, Crazy Spiros, and those Goomba fatheads, they don't know that this is just what they've been waiting for. Now, I can fight him, or I can try to keep the lid on him. The only way I can do that is to prove I'm innocent. Of course, the best thing would be if the cops found the killer. But I can't really see them doing that and busting their hump where I'm concerned. The truth is, they probably hope that Spiros and I shoot it out. And that's exactly what I don't want. You really think Spiros is that crazy? See your question. What's good about it? It appears you lead a charm life, Mr. Amati. Yeah, it does seem that way, don't it? Peter. Herschel. Mr. Stefano. Can Jerry drive me home? Jerry's dead. 
What about Max? Max is going to hang around till I finish my investigation. Miss... Sure. She's with you? An old friend. Excuse me. Can't be that old. Peter, slumming? Business. You see who did the shooting? You talking to me? Yep. I was flat on my face on the floor. Translated means you didn't see anything. Right. How about you, Miss Sean? She was on the floor with me. Hey, she can talk. I distinctly heard her say she was going home. I was under Mr. Gunn. What's your first name, Miss Shaw? Sheila. And you didn't see anything? Well, I could see Mr. Gunn. What kind of business? That's privileged. Since when do gumshoes take the Hippocratic Oath? It's personal, Herschel. It may not be enough, Peter. Did anybody shoot back? You mean like customers with guns? No, I mean like some of your boys with guns. And you have my word, if you're cute about it, you and anybody else with marinara stains on his shirt are going to spend the rest of the evening being fingerprinted, photographed, and generally raked over the coals down at the precinct, including your old friend, Sheila, here. Well, like I said, I didn't see nothing, but I guess somebody must have shot back. You guess. How about you? I guess I did see one of the Cthulhu shooters being dragged out. He was doubled over, but I couldn't swear he was shot. Yeah, it could have been gas. Hard to tell with all that noise. <laughs> Comedians. How'd you know it was a Cthulhu shooter? Natural assumption. You didn't recognize him? No. You just assumed. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Yeah. All right, I'm going to have a little chat with some of your boys that are still standing, but you and Miss Shaw are free to go. Tony, give my regards to the missus. Naughty. Why don't you drop in and see me tomorrow? What time? When you get up, around noon. OK, if I borrow someone to take me home? Yeah, if he isn't dead. Make it fast and send me the bill. Nothing personal, but I don't think I want the job. Would you rather be dead? Do I have a choice? No. You drive a hard bargain, boss. Just tell me. I'll figure out what it's all about. You know that private dick, the one you hate? Gun. Yeah, Gun. He was with Tony. Gun and Tony. What the hell is that all about? In today's top story, the Soviet Union issued a warning to the United States calling for a halt to the spread of the war in South Vietnam. President Johnson responded to the official task statement by reaffirming America's support of the government of South Vietnam. The statement cautioned against expanding the war into the borders of North Vietnam and further called for the removal of all American military support in the region. Similar demands... Hello? Stay out of the Catullus thing, or you're a dead man. Hi. 
Can I help you? With what? What? You asked if you could help me. Yes. Do you have an appointment? No. Do you? Are you in the right place? I think so. Are you? This is the Peter Gunn Private Detective Agency. And has been since July 5th, 1957. Really? I have no reason to lie to you. Do you know Mr. Gunn? Superficially. Do you? No. Actually, we've never met, even though I'm his secretary. Really? I just started to work here this morning. Uh, where's Bernice? You know Bernice? Well, I'm Bernice's cousin. She knew I was looking for a job, and she asked me to fill in while she was in Crete. Crete? She thought she'd be gone about three weeks. Crete? It's an island in... I know where. I'm interested in why. Why it's an island? Why she went there. To meet his family. I told her I thought she should look a little longer before she leaped. I mean, you don't know someone for just two days and then run off to Crete to meet their family. Well, you know Bernice. Obviously not. I guess if she passes inspection, she'll marry Zorba and they'll honeymoon on Crete. He didn't say much, but he seemed awfully nice. Would you call someone who lives on Crete a Cretan? I don't see why not. Why am I telling you all this? I don't even know you. Who are you? Why are you here? Which question would you like me to answer first? How come you know Bernice? Well, that's a whole new question. Who were you calling? No one. But I thought you might think I was, and then you'd leave. Why would I leave? Hey! You can't go in the... This is Mr. Gunn's office. Are you? Are you? Oh, golly. She said to be sure to have your coffee hot, black, two sugars before I even said hello. But she didn't tell me how to recognize you. Oh, that was quick. You're quick. Great reflexes. What do I call you? Clumsy. Maggie. Maggie Dugan. Can you type? About 50 words a minute, but I don't have to make many corrections. How about shorthand? Is it a requirement? No. No. Well, you're pretty. Thanks. Good legs. Okay, let's give it a try. Oh. Well, how about some more coffee? Uh, I'm game if you are. Some gentleman to see you? Well, must be a leak in the sewer. Can I help you, gentlemen? Spiros wants to see you. I hope it's important. What if it ain't? Well, if it ain't, it ain't. I just hoped it was. What was that sewer crack? Just a crack, nothing personal. Oh, I took it personally, huh? How long will you be gone? Hopefully a short time. Well, what'll I do till you get back? Anything but hold your breath. It's going to take long. I've got a 12 o'clock appointment with Lieutenant Jacoby. And knowing the lieutenant, if I'm late, he's going to be very upset. I'll call my secretary, and she's going to tell him I'm with you guys. Just trying to help.
Gumshoe. Long time no see. Not long enough. Hello, Gus. Still a big mountain. What were you doing with Tony and Marty last night? Mostly ducking. Don't be a smartass. You keep shoving me. The word is Tony hired you to find out who killed my brother. Whose word? True? Answer him. Tell him to stop shoving me. I'll tell him to tear off your head and spit in your neck! Now, did Tony hire you or not? Look, Spiros, try to appreciate my position. If I made a deal with you, you'd expect me to keep it confidential, wouldn't you? No. No, no. Okay, wise guy. Right. You make a deal, you keep it confidential. Okay. So now, you and me are gonna make a deal. What kind of a deal? Same kind of deal you made, Tony, with one exception. I'm hiring you not to find out who killed Julius. Hmm. No offense, but uh, doesn't that make it look like maybe you had something to do with it? <laughs> hey, if you keep it confidential, who's gonna know? But if you did, that makes me an accessory. Yeah, if I did. But I didn't. Then what's wrong with letting me find out who did? Because... As long as certain parties, myself included, think that Tony put out the hit, I got every right to blow Tony out of the water. Your brother wouldn't want it that way. All Julius ever wanted was an excuse. Now, thanks to Julius, I got one. I'm late for an appointment. We got a deal. I'll think about it. Help him think about it. biceps are going to explode and ruin this fiddle. Fiddle? Yeah. Oh, I realize that, Commissioner. Yes, and I... Well, I, int I intend to take care of it as quickly as possible, Commissioner. One more time, sir. Oh, I'm going to tell him. Yes, even as we speak, sir. Oh, I will, Commissioner. Y yes, Commissioner. Thank you. Goodbye. Where, Where the, the hell, hell have you been? been? Don't, Don't be a smart ass. ass. Why don't you take over the whole conversation? Do both of them. I don't want to do you. You're grumpy. Grumpy doesn't cover it. I am getting enough heat from City Hall to melt all the candles in the Vatican. That was the Commissioner. I thought it might be when you called him Commissioner. The Governor called me at 7.30 this morning. Well, if you don't like Grumpy. I'm angry. It's appropriate. Not very original. At you. What? Hey, not this. You want to read something? Read this. What do you think was the first thing the Governor asked me at 7.30 this morning? Did you put the cat out? Why the hell was an ex-cop, my former partner, an alleged bosom buddy... Alleged? ...apparently socializing with a mafia captain? I hope you told him bosom is just a metaphor. I didn't tell him anything. He told me to tell you to butt out. He personally pinned that Medal of Valor on you, and he doesn't want to see it tarnished by your skullduggery. He said that? His exact words. Skullduggery? Skullduggery. Pretty flowery verbiage for an ex longshoreman. Well, ex or not, a vocation not to be trifled. Don't worry, my trifling license has expired. Look, tell me you're not working for Tony Amati. Tell me you're not. I'm not. Would you tell me if you were? 
Which means you probably are. Which means I probably don't have any choice. You? Come on! You're gonna have to trust me on this one, Herschel. Hey, I would dearly love to, Pete, but if this thing escalates into a mob war, I'm afraid trust is going to be at a premium. Hey, you wanna tell me what you've got so far? No, you first. I don't think Tony Amati and Julius Cotullo's killed. Go on. I thought you were gonna say something. I just did. Go on. An hour ago, Spiros Cthulhu tried to hire me not to find out who killed his brother. Not to. Yeah. One thing led to another, and someone shot one of Spiros' soldiers. Someone? Saved my bacon because it distracted Spiros. But why didn't he take out Spiros? If he was one of Tony's shooters, why didn't he take out Spiros? If he was my fairy godmother, why didn't he take out Spiros? All right, I'll bite. Why didn't he take out Spiros? Only one reason I can think of. He wanted to save me, but he wanted Spiros alive. Why? Make sure Spiros keeps the war going. Pretty far-fetched. How do you rate Julius Cotulus's killer? Cute. Ties a lead weight on a wire, tosses it over a high-tension line into Julius's pool. Right, pretty cute. Cuter if he gets rid of the wire, and everybody just assumes Julius swam himself in a heart attack. A pair of insulated gloves pulls the wire back over the high-tension line. Unless he wants to make sure that Spiros has an excuse to start a war. Somebody who wants to see the Amadi and Catullus mobs wipe each other out. It's cuter by the minute. Keep in touch. Peter, how's it going? Not too bad, Speck. What's the good word? The good word tonight is bus. One S or two? Two, as in to bust the clouds. As in Shakespeare. <laughs> Do you feel like busting the clouds, Pete? All the time. I got a thing for clouds. I knew it. What else do you know? Not much. How much is that? It's just a rumor. I remember my sixth grade teacher, Miss Benson, telling the class there was a rumor the Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbor. How old were you then? Eleven, twelve. Good memory. I remember just about everything Miss Benson ever said. She had red hair and smelled like lilacs. <laughs> you were lucky my sixth grade teacher smelled like a wet rug. You're interested in rumors. Rumor has it the man who threw the hot wire into Julius Catullus' swimming pool is a cop. Somehow I find that a little hard to swallow. Huh? Right. Has to be expected, you being an ex-cop. But in my experience in this old corrupt world is anything is possible. Let's see you sink the 16 ball. Run across one. Get in touch.
He dragged me into the bedroom, and then they tied me up. They? Yeah. There was another one. He put his mask on me. Did you see his face? It was too dark. I think this milk is off. I put something in it to help you relax. Drugs? It's just an herb. Oh, it doesn't taste very good. Did he say anything to you? Yes. What? Which one? Either one. Well, the man who grabbed me at the door said, Scream, and I'll kill you. Would you recognize his voice? If I heard it again. Anything else? Tire legs. He said that to? The other man. Anything else? Not to the other man. To you? Yes. What? He said, tell Gunn to lay off the something killing. Cthulhu's. Yeah. Tell Gunn to lay off the Cthulhu's killing or you're dead. You. Yeah, me. Sure. Look, I hate to leave you shorthanded, and I know this Cthulhu's thing is important, and I wouldn't expect you to risk it all just to keep me on as your secretary. You know, I suddenly feel very relaxed. <laughs> Good. What about the other man? Uh, he didn't say much. Okay. Sure. Things like that. I feel absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Where did you learn about herbs? From a man named Wu. Ooh. Uh, you got better lie down. <clears throat> Two hours sleep, and you'll be your old self again. Whatever that was. Hey. Okay. What's this? I think maybe you better have it back. How come? I'm uncomfortable with it. Why? Oh, I don't know. Let's just say I don't really feel our relationship is developed to the degree that warrants me having a key to your apartment. You've had this key for six months. If you were honest with yourself, you'd admit we were better off before you gave it to me. Define better off. Closer. Spicier, less secure. Less secure is better off? Better off than too secure. Six months ago, you were healthily jealous, happily playful, hopelessly romantic. Lately, you've begun to take me for granted. No, that's not true. And I, you. Why don't you close the door? Well. It started taking me for granted. Is, is there someone here? What? Do you have a woman here? A woman? One more time, Pete. Do you have a woman here? Someone who wears cheap perfume? Yes. It's my secretary. Bernice smells like bleach. She doesn't wear perfume. Well, I should have said my new secretary. Maggie, I'm sorry, I can't remember your last name. She just started this morning. It's funny, 
It was right on the tip of my tongue. She was attacked. I came home and found her tied to my bed. I had to give her something to help her relax. I'll bet you did. Duncan! No, that's not it. She's in a state of shock. I know just how she feels. Dugan! <laughs> nice meeting you. I think I have a milk allergy. I kept thinking the whole time I was in that awful mask. What's Mr. Gunn gonna do without his secretary? If something like that happens to me again, they'll probably have to lock me up in a rubber room. I'll be just fine until Bernice gets back. I'm sorry. So am I, Maggie. You are? Sure. But c'est la vie. Well, what if she doesn't? What? Come back, Bernice. Oh, well, I guess I'll just have to find another secretary. Good night, Maggie. Good night, Mr. Gunn. It's Pete. Good night, Pete. Why don't you go home? I got another set to do. It's too late to be loud, and you are too mad to sing the blues. Honey. Go home. I'll think of something. How about a ginger ale this time? Ginger ale and scotch? You must be kidding. They 
I told you the truth. Ask Bernice. What's the matter? Afraid you might be wrong? No. Then call her up. Ask her. What if she's not home? What if she's in some place like Crete? Call her in Crete. I'll pay for it. Oh, well, I don't know why you're making this such a big deal. She's simply a temporary replacement. A replacement for what? For Bernice, who is in Crete, meeting Zorba's family. Zorba? Do you think I'd make up something like that? Yes, I think you'd make up something like that, just so you could say you think I'd make up something like that. Well, then maybe you can tell me what I'm doing here, trying to convince you. Sure. Wasting your time. How come you don't have a top? I do. Where is it? In my garage, keeping dry. Oh. Party poop. But you're about three and a half months too late. Well, how do you feel about making up for lost time? That depends. On what? How does Tony feel about it? If Tony found out, he'd probably kill me. You're probably about half right. Well, let's just keep it our little secret. Don't you think you better get out of those wet clothes before you catch a cold? Better cold with them on than dead with them off, I always say. I always say the greater the risk, the greater the reward. <laughs> what if I disappoint you? I'll chance it. What if you disappoint me? But don't take my word for it. Mm. When I came in, I smelled cordite. Cordite? Gunpowder. Did you shoot the milkman? Or uh, are you wearing perfume put out by the National Rifle Association? I'm wearing joy. And I didn't see the milkman. You expecting someone? This is probably the cake. Your coat. I guess it's nearly three in the morning. It was two forty-two. After you left, I got to thinking. I really meant what I said about not being able to handle a life-threatening job. Do you smell something funny? It's cordite. Cordite? You were saying? Oh yes. Well, even though I'm not constitutionally equipped for the task, it's not fair to leave you in the lurch, so to speak. So I've decided, with your approval, of course, to remain as your secretary until Bernice gets back. I'll get it. No, I'll. You don't want me to get yes. It? Just happened to be in the neighborhood. Miss Hart, Miss Dugan. We've met, Miss Rada. I was just returning Pete's coat. At three in the morning? It's 2.44. Do I smell gunpowder? Cordite. 
What do you do, Miss Dugan? Edie, I told you. Yes, now I'd like Miss Dugan to tell me. I presume it is, Miss. Well, what would you like me to tell you first, Miss Hart? Suit yourself. Well, I used to be Mr. Gunn's secretary. Oh, now it's Mr. Gunn. A few moments ago, you were returning Pete's coat. I told her to call me Pete. Why didn't you ever tell Bernice to call oh, because you Because Bernice had other names for me. You said you used to be Mr. Gunn's secretary? Well, I quit, because I thought the job was too dangerous. Yeah, you were right. But then I decided that I didn't want to leave Pete, uh, Mr. Gunn, in the lurch. And it is Miss. Mm. What's going on? Anybody want to answer that? Full house. Who's in the closet? I'm afraid to look. I'll look. Oh! I'll see you later. It's better and better. Hey, sorry to bother you, Pete, but we got a call. Gunshots? Yeah. I believe you know Miss Hart, Lieutenant Russo. Mm -hmm. Yeah? My secretary. I thought Bernice was. In Creek. Oh. I must be in the wrong apartment. Uh, this isn't the uh, goes on apartment? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> what a silly mistake. Excuse me. Uh, uh Stick around, Sheila. Bye. Bye. Hi, Edie. Hi, Herschel. Uh, I was just on my way home. Well, give me a couple minutes. I'll have somebody drive you. I've got my own car. Okay, but give me a couple minutes anyway. It better be good. They got me out of bed. You'll love it. Oh, Miss Shaw. The Lieutenant, I just happened to get into the wrong apartment. I, I really... I... Oh, really? Whose apartment did you think you were in? Um, Gazon's uh, apartment. Mm -hmm. Can you spell that? Can you spell this? Oh. This is uh, Pete's secretary. I thought Bernice was. In Crete. Visiting Zorba's parents. Butsy Modine and Slick Spelling. Spiro's gonna be unhappy he lost two of his best shooters. You call the coroner? No, we just got here. All right, get statements from uh, Miss Hart, Miss Shaw, and... Uh, Miss Dugan. As soon as she's up to it. I'll personally question Mr. Gunn. Peter? Perfect. Hot chocolate with jelly donuts. What do you usually have for breakfast? Orange juice and a jelly donut. What's so special about jelly donuts? The jelly? I don't like just plain donuts. Got all kinds of donuts. I know, I tried them. Do you want to try? No, I tried. So, uh, why do you think Futsy and Slick were found in your closet? Somebody put them in there. Who? Well, if you found two dead Cthulhu shooters in your closet, who would you suspect? Oh, I asked you first. Tony Amati. Why? Because that's the way it was intended to look. So you're not convinced? No. Are you? No. So, Futsy and Slick were killed by who? By whom? Not me. When I came in, there was a strong smell of cordite. What time was that? About 2.30. I looked around. I found Miss Shaw in my bed. I bet you were surprised. I bet you don't really believe that. That Tony would be. I'm not so sure. Oh, you think he sent her? Maybe. What for? I'll find out if I discovered something I wasn't telling him. Oh, have you? Well, got a match? Sorry, I stopped smoking. I didn't ask you for a cigarette. But if I don't smoke, why would I carry matches? Beats me. Want to have some fun? At 4.30 in the morning? I didn't ask you what time it is. I know something you should have asked me. Yeah, what's that? If I'm a cop. Are you? No. <laughs> but he is. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that's what my friend said. Yeah, she said, um, she said, I bet you five bucks he's a cop. And then she said, go over and pretend you're a hooker. <laughs> and proposition is good looking, friend. <laughs> I owe you five bucks, he's a cop. Uh, let's go, uh, yeah, we're gonna be, uh, late for the 7 o'clock mass. <laughs>
<laughs> Where were we? Have you discovered something you're not telling Tony? Nothing for sure. How about not for sure? I still don't think that Spiros or Tony or Julius Cthulhu's killed. Then whom, maybe? Who? Like a cop, maybe? How'd you come up with that? One of my many semi-reliable, untrustworthy stool pigeons. But nothing specific. Just a hint. He didn't elaborate. You buy it? Oh, yeah. Maybe it was two cops. How'd you come up with that? Last night, somebody turned Spiros' fancy apartment into a shooting gallery. They missed Spiros, but they killed three of his poker players. What's the punchline? He was lowered from the roof. Well, nothing else that makes it plural. But why cops? Why not? Most of them spend 20 years enforcing the law, risking their lives for peanuts, while scum like Tony and Spiros make millions, die from old age, or eating too much rich food. Spoken like a true ex-cop. Oh, don't get me wrong, Herschel. I don't condone rogue cops, whether they're on the take or killing gangsters, but I sure as hell can understand it. So I turned in my shield after five years. Another six months, I might have done what those cops are doing, if they are cops. Julius gets electrocuted in his swimming pool. Ingenious killer who knew Julius took an early morning swim. Warned me to stay out of it, so he knew Tony had hired me. How would a cop know that? Spiros knew. But he's probably got somebody in Tony's organization, just like Tony's probably got somebody in Spiros's. At 10 o'clock, a man on the roof lowers another man who shoots up Spiros' apartment. Again, pretty ingenious. And they knew about Spiros' Thursday night poker games. Earlier, about 6.30, two men tied up Maggie. Maggie? Miss Stugan, my temporary secretary. What is all this about Bernice and Crete? You'll have to ask Zorba. Who the hell is Zorba? You'll have to ask Bernice. What about the shooter in Spiros's warehouse? Two in the afternoon. And your closet corpses? Had to be between the time I left and returned, before Sheila got there. Unless, of course, she killed him. I doubt she would hang around just to get you into bed. I think I resent that. And as little as I know about Sheila, she impresses me as being the definitive freewheeling female. Well, I'm going to be talking to her again and knowing her almost as well as you do. I'll bet she's planning on a return engagement. Really? This is one of those times I'm counting on your notoriously poor judgment of character. Early in the morning, late in the afternoon, early evening, and late at night. What do we have? Creative killers who work around the clock. Well, that doesn't necessarily rule out cops. No. If they pick their spots, they could manage. But not uniforms. Not enough free time. Too easy to check on. More likely detectives. More likely not cops at all. 5.30. I gotta go to work soon. <laughs> you got just enough time to get another jelly donut. Silly, dumb excuses like, I must be in the wrong apartment. A jealous girlfriend, a dizzy blonde secretary, three cops, two corpses. <laughs> I've had better nightmares after a three-day binge. <laughs> Call him. He's probably still asleep. It's four in the afternoon. Try him again.
The both of them stuffed in Gunn's closet. The cops dragged me out of bed at six this morning. They had me downtown for almost three hours. I'm really beginning to hate that gun. Gunn didn't do it. He's got two witnesses. Well, if Gunn didn't, then it's gotta be. I know who it's gotta be, and I'm gonna get him. Not so loud. I'm gonna turn the Marty and his whole organization into fish food. Quiet! He just got excited. He was telling me about a death in the family. I'm sorry. But you must either keep your voice down or leave. How's this? Much better. Can you hear me? Of course. Then how'd you like me to take out your gold ladder? This suit costs more than a week in a year. Keep your hands off it. I told you. Hey, hey, get your hands off me, bum. Come on, let's get out of here. Laying all kidding aside, at my age, you gotta be on your toes every minute. You know, last week a girl invited me up to her my apartment and I didn't hear her. <laughs> <laughs> tonight, uh, tonight our show is about model uh, homes, you know, it's about homes. And uh, I saw a model home the other night, and she wouldn't let me in. <laughs> well, that's you, I think. Oh! Oh! What are you doing to me? I told you you can call me Pete. Oh, gosh, did I wake you? Yeah, but that's okay. Is it morning or night? Night. Every time I called, I got a busy signal, so naturally I assumed you were awake and taking calls. Or making them. What time is it? It's about 6.30. My watch is broken. Why don't you get it fixed? I can't afford it. We never did talk about salary. Well, Bernice said she'd take care of me when she got back. What has she done? Take care of me? Get back. Well, gee. How broke are you? Flat. How do you get to work in the morning? Walk. It's got to be about six miles. It keeps me in shape. You walked here from the office? I hitched. Hmm. Every time I called you, I, I kept getting this busy signal, so naturally I decided that I should come over and give you your messages, personally. Do they advance against your salary? Oh, I don't. You don't? Well, I do. I want you to lease a car. Oh, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. It goes with the job. I don't drive. Take lessons. I did. I'm hopeless. I need a secretary who can drive. I'll teach you. Oh, I don't. Trust me. Oh, I do. Messages. Um, Miss Hart called once about noon, and Miss Shaw called three times. The last time about five o'clock. She was kind of mad because I didn't know how to get a hold of you. Oh. Anybody else? Um. Uh. Somebody named Speck. What'd he want? Oh. Um. He. Uh. He asked me to tell you. Uh. That he just sunk the 16 ball. Mind if I have an orange or something? I think I'm having a low blood sugar. I shall return.
depends. How long are you planning to park? Half hour tops. 20 bucks for the first half hour, a buck a minute thereafter. If somebody accidentally steals the engine, carves his initials on the seats. Are you paying for parking? You want protection? Take out insurance. How much? 20 bucks, covers everything, no deductible. What about acts of God? He don't act around here. And in his turf. <laughs> hey, when you get back, he trusts you. Yeah, just like a real parking lot. Walking down the street singing Willie! What? Uh, Willie, this is Mr. Gunn, Mr. Gunn, this is Mr. Peebles. Uh, Willie has a story he'd like to tell you. <laughs> How do you do? Uh, well... A couple of hours ago, I was shut down, uh, down by the river, and I saw this police car pull over a great big caddy limo, and uh, the two policemen got out of their car, and they went over to the limo, and they talked for a couple of minutes, and then they started shooting. Shooting what? The people in the car! Uniformed cops? No, plain clothes. Black and white? No, unmarked. How'd you know they were cops? Because I seen them! If they weren't in uniform, they weren't driving a black and white. <laughs> I know them. They rushed me half a dozen times. They, they worked me over once they, they cracked a rib. They was in uniform then about three years ago. You know their names? Uh, Willie was uh, hoping to spend the winter in Florida. Nothing elaborate. Uh, thinks he can manage on 200. Called, I put an APB out for the limo. About an hour ago, one of our units located Amadi's limo, parked on a back road about a mile south of the river. There were three bodies in it. The driver, Abe Greenspan, and Johnny Stefano, shot to pieces. So Willie was right. I suggest you start looking for two cops. You're taking the word of some itinerant derelict who wants to thaw out in Palm Beach, and at the same time sees a chance to get even with some cops that he claims busted a rib. The car was there. Stefano and Greenspan were shot to pieces. Pete, why cops? Why not Catula shooters, which is ten times more likely? More likely? You bet your butt. Did Greenspan and Johnny Stefano just let two Catula shooters walk up to their car? We don't know what happened like that. Well, somebody was able to get close enough to pop them off like sitting ducks. That's the way it looks. That's not necessarily the way it is. How many times when you were a cop did you see something that looked one way and turned out to be just the opposite? Check on it. I already have. The investigation is proceeding as we speak, and so far there's nothing to report except the fact that this case is giving me major indigestion. Admit it. Half your problem is jelly donuts. Leave me. You would never like this when we painted together. 
Shoot. I thought you guys were cops. When you start collecting garbage... I'll rip your heart out, you... All right, all right. Watch the goods. Yeah. You going to sign the contract? Don't worry. I'll sign it. It's the one I'm afraid to Where the hell have you been? Do I get to sit down? Yeah, but I want some fast answers. So do I. You certainly look fetching tonight, Miss Sean. Thank you. So do you. Cut the clown and let's have it. You first. Look, wise guy, don't mess with me because I ain't in the mood. Neither am I. Because a few hours ago, somebody did some heavy caliber target practice on my T-bird. So what? So I was in it. So why did they do that? Because they didn't want me to find out who slaughtered Greenspan and Stefano. Johnny and Abe. And their driver. Max? So who was it? Spiros. No, cops. What? Cops? You gotta be kidding. Two cops shot him. Which cops? Do I know them? Greenspan and Stefano must have. They let him walk right up to their car and say hello. Well, who are they? I thought you might know. How the hell would I know? You think they're my cops? The thought did occur to me. If they were my cops, they sure as hell wouldn't go around bumping off two of my best men. Unless you wanted them to. You're crazy. I don't own any cops. Anyway, why cops? It doesn't make any sense. What if these cops wanted to start a war? They killed Julius Catullus and Spiros retaliates, only you don't go for it. I hired you to get me off the hook. So they kill a Catullus man and make it look like you retaliated. And the war is on. Ah, oh, that's crazy. Why would cops do that? What's the angle? Maybe they just got tired of watching you and Spiros break the law. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Maybe it's something else. Something I haven't figured out yet. All I know is there are two cops out there who aren't going to be satisfied until you and Spiros are blown out of the water. I still think you're crazy. Maybe. But what if I'm not? I've seen you again, Michonne. I've seen you?
something in bed. Sure, this way. You don't look surprised. I spotted you at the tavern. I underestimated you. You always have. Not always. Turn around and put your hands behind your neck. Now drop your right hand.
just couldn't stay out of it, could you? Did you really expect me to? No, not really. You okay? I busted my nose. Oh, uh, what now? What else? 20 years, maybe life? Maybe not. Come on, P. We've killed eight guys. Yeah. Why? I thought you figured it out. I knew it was cops. But I didn't know who until you walked into the tavern. I still don't understand why. It's not very complicated. You work for Tony Amati, so do we. You wake up one morning, decide you're entitled to a piece of the action? Sure, why not? If you don't know, pal, I'm afraid it'd take too long to explain it to you. Yeah, I mean, your time's running out, Pete. Why the mob war? I figured it was time to get out. And I know Tony Amati sure as hell's not gonna give me a well done and present me with a gold watch. So I iced Catullus, figuring his brother Spiros would whack Tony. Or you whack Tony and it'll look like Spiros. Yeah, one way or another. And then Tony and a couple other guys that know I'm on the take, they're dead and buried, I still get my pension. Mm -hmm. What about Sheila? It was her idea. We're gonna grow old together in Bora Bora. Hey, don't you think you told him too much? What's the difference? Are you sure you're all right? Yeah. I'm sorry, Gumshoe. Cuff yourself. Let's get this over with. Forgive the cliché, but uh, you're not going to get away with this. You're forgiven. Tony knows it's cops. It's only a matter of time before he figures out which ones. Yeah, but time is something Tony doesn't have. I know you, Paul. You can't kill me in cold blood and live with it. Forgive the cliché, but I got no choice. Morning, Herschel. What took you so long? I had to wait for the lab reports on the rifle we found in Paul's garage. You want to come down here with me, Peter? Sure. Don't be stupid, Paul. Sorry, Lieutenant. I'm just doing the best I can. Well, then let him go and give me your guns. I can't do that. That is too bad. You alone? Yeah, just me. That's too bad. For who? Boom. How about you give me a half hour head start, huh? I can't do that. You can't. I can. Pete. I'd give it to you, but I'm not a cop. We're wasting time. <laughs> do that again in a million years. I hope I never have to. Tony wants to see you. I'll miss my plane and my mother's dying in Cleveland. That's too bad. I hate Cleveland. Sheila Shaw? Who wants to know? Oh, Sheila Shaw. <laughs> That's me. You're under arrest? Let's go. I'll see you in Cleveland. <laughs>
should have been like this all along. It took the cops to do it, huh? Together we can't <laughs> lose. Don't be too sure. Hey, ho, ho, ho. That loudmouth private dick you hide. There's an old saying about counting chickens. I'm returning your check. What's the matter? Not enough? No. Too much. Well, that's easy. How much you want? From you, nothing is too much. Thanks for the refund. You're trespassing! What the hell are you doing up there? Just making a point. about you. You are a regular wild Pete Dickock. Keeps me young. She's been waiting about an hour. What's she drinking? Bloody Mary mix. Send over another. Maggie? I kept calling you. I had to go to the hospital. It was to see Lieutenant Jacoby. Don't worry, he's gonna be just fine. It's wonderful. I didn't order this. I did. But uh, maybe you've had enough. It's just mix. I'm just beginning to upset my stomach. Maggie, why are you crying? Bernice is back. Oh. She just showed up, no warning or anything. With a sore belt. Reminds me of Mr. Fernandez. Who's Mr. Fernandez? He was our grocer in Tacoma where I lived. It's from Bernice. We can see the rest of the world She says she's not coming back to work. Isn't that great? Then why are you crying? I don't know. I said I'd work for you until Bernice came back, and now she's back and she's not going to work for you. I guess I'm confused. I don't know what to do. Well, I don't want to influence you, but uh, I'd love to have you keep on working for me. I thought you quit smoking. So did I. Some things in life are tough to give up. Cigarettes? What else? Lips. <laughs> Those again. I can't help it. I'm hooked. Special lips or just lips in general? Kissable lips. Mm. Must be plenty of those. That's what makes it so tough. What are the prerequisites? Shape, compatibility. <laughs> you have a rating system. I'd be lost without it. Well, 
If you want to kick a habit, you got to have the guts to face up to the problem. Listen, I'm desperate. I'll try anything. Take my lips, for example. Okay. You think it'll help? Do they qualify? Shape's good. How about compatibility? Well, if you want an accurate evaluation, you're going to have to have the guts to be patient. Hmm. I don't think it's working. Hang in there. 